Hey guys, it's me, Seren, back with another video. Um, so this video is going to be a quick, a quick video, really, um, about kind of similar in vain to what I talked about in my The Importance of Black Critics video. Um, just something that I've seen a lot of people kind of talking about, and, and there's been a really good discussion going on around this idea of the importance of black narratives and, and black people controlling their own narratives and, and kind of telling our own stories which again yeah I talked about in my um black critics video I've also talked about it in my the importance of all black digital spaces videos so you guys know this is something I've been talking about kind of for a while um but it seems like the Daniel Holtz Claw trial was a tipping point <laughs> on this topic for a lot of people so for those of you that don't know even that well I'm not going to say even though I don't know how you couldn't know because that's kind of the point a lot of people didn't know. Daniel Holtzclaw is a former Oklahoma City um, Police Department officer. He was, he's been, he was charged with, what was it? 26? No. 34. He was charged with 34 counts, various counts of rape, sodomy, stalking, but just violence against black women. And um, he, last week, on his birthday, on his 29th birthday, he was found guilty of roughly half of them. So I believe 18, 18 of the counts he was found guilty on. Um, the jury recommended a sentence that adds up to about 236 years. The 18 counts that he was found guilty on, most of them carry a maximum sentence of about 30 years. They haven't decided yet if the um, sentence sentencing is going to run concurrent or consecutive, which means that he well, basically he could possibly let's say you have five counts of, of 30 years so instead of having to serve 150 if they run concurrently instead of consecutive you only have to serve those 30 years so I, I believe his sentencing is January 17th and then we'll know for sure but he was found guilty a lot of people feel like you know this this was a huge win because it's very very hard to prove rape and it's especially hard to prove a rape case against you know a respected official, a public figure, an authority, an authority, an authoritative figure like a police officer. Um, and Daniel Holtzclaw also specifically targeted black women. All 13 of his victims were black, um, including an elderly woman, a grandmother, and an underage, a minor, a child. So he said himself, you know, and that no one cares about them. Who cares? No one cares about them. You know, his, his victims said, you know, we felt like they would, no one would believe us. Who's going to believe a, a black woman against, you know, this, this man, this white man, this cop? He's half white, half Asian. Whatever. Who's going to believe us against this man, you know? Um, so really, a lot of people felt like this was a really strong statement in finding him guilty um, and, and convicting him. So, but with that being said, this case, 13 women black women raped by a police officer received little to no mainstream media coverage almost none almost nothing no mainstream media coverage which really annoyed a lot of people really pissed a lot of people off um people have been keeping this story circulating and going pretty much exclusively through social media until last week when um he was tried and he was found guilty and the the 263 years number started circulating and then all of a sudden mainstream media they want to turn off the trump show because they've been 24 7 reporting on trump 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 because trump gives ratings and rape of black women apparently does not so they decided to turn the trump show off and finally cover it but there were so many people that were saying hitting me up on twitter hitting me up on instagram on tumblr saying you know your tweets or your posts were the first that I even heard of this guy, Daniel Holtzclaw, right? And this has been a case that's been ongoing for well over a year. So a lot of people have basically said, this trial proved to me that social media is a better place to get news than the mainstream media. Like, fuck CNN, fuck Fox, fuck MSNBC, fuck NBC, fuck CBS, fuck, fuck all the mainstream media because all the mainstream media is doing is chasing ratings. I definitely recommend that everyone watch Nightcrawler if you get the opportunity. I believe Nightcrawler is on Netflix. It used to be on Netflix. Um, but even if it's not on Netflix, I recommend everyone watch it because Nightcrawler is a really great peek into kind of the seedy underbelly of journalism and especially mainstream media, um, mainstream journalism and news networks that are really chasing ratings and are pushing a narrative. Whatever the narrative is, whatever the spin, 
what they call it, spin. You learn that in journalism school. You literally learn spin. Whatever the spin is to push a narrative to get the most views, to get the most clicks, to get the highest ratings, the best numbers. That's what you're supposed to do. So it's not necessarily about informing people. It's not necessarily about giving people the news. It's not necessarily about honesty, about ethics, about morals, about journalistic integrity. It's about numbers. It is a ratings game. And it really seems like the Daniel Holtzclaw case has woken a lot of people up to that. Um, I have just saw a lot of conversation kind of going around on Twitter. I want to read you guys some tweets. This tweet by Danny Cal, really good. She said, they've proven themselves unfit to handle our stories countless times, so I wonder why we still want them covering our stories. I don't. I'm enjoying the guilty verdict in a safe space online with peers away from mainstream media's hot takes. It feels better. Similar to what I said in the University of Missouri. Similar to what they said in, in the University of Missouri protest. We don't want you here, mainstream media. We don't want you here. We don't need you here. We can spread our own stories. We can create our own narrative. You know, we, we can be the masters of our own story in the way that we're perceived, in the way that we interact with each other, the way that we spread our own stories. We don't need you. We don't need you and your lies and your bullshit-ass narrative. Um, and like I said, the Daniel Holtzclaw case is really an example of that. I'm going to read some more tweets. Social media has become such a powerful tool. Us sharing it alone can do two times what mainstream white stations can. And you also have mainstream white stations that mine black Twitter and mine black social media for fucking events and, and you know, current events and hot topics and, in, and all that shit. Anyway, journalism nowadays is fucking copy pasting tweets from black Twitter, slapping your name on a byline and getting paid for that shit. Like, we don't even need them. We don't need them. All we need is ourselves and each other. Black critics, black storytellers, black social media, black news outlets. We can control our own narrative. And especially when we see how mainstream media twists and warps narratives, if and when they cover a story at all, you know, we have the power. We have the power. We are powerful. We are strong. We don't need to keep trying to insert ourselves into this mainstream white space into these mainstream white spaces we don't have to keep chasing this mainstream white attention we don't need this white validation we don't need the white gaze to validate our stories we were talking on twitter about how people kind of unintentionally erase the influence of black people in the way that we talk to each other and the way that we phrase certain things you know like when people say no one is talking about this daniel holtz claw case it's like you're talking about it. <laughs> you're talking about it to me. We're talking about it. We're black. You're black. I'm black. We're having this conversation amongst ourselves. How can you say that no one is talking about it? You're kind of downplaying your own importance. You're kind of unintentionally erasing yourself. And you're kind of validating this idea and this opinion that something is only being talked about and is only worthy when it's being covered by a mainstream publication, a white publication, you know, mainstream media. And it's something that is so ingrained that it's really something you have to unlearn, you know, just certain problematic phrases. I personally hate the phrase black love still exists. I hate that phrase. Who said that black love didn't exist? I hate the phrase, I hate the phrasing of still. Black love exists, period, the end. I, I, I'm married, I know it, I have friends that are married, my parents, you know, it's like black love exists. It's using the word still is kind of giving validity to this, to this idea that it doesn't exist. I don't want to validate that. I'm not validating that. I'm not validating that at all. 84% of black men marry black women. 7%, 6 or 7% of black of black men marry white, white women. And then like the rest of that percentage is like other. I had like posted that stat on Instagram before. So it's like we unintentionally validate these ideas even in the way that we talk about them because we, we, give, we give our power away to these white people and, and the white gays and white mainstream media, you know, for this validation when we don't need it, we can validate ourselves. We can be enough for ourselves. So it's just a really interesting conversation. Um, and I feel the same way about the Grammys and I feel the same way about the Oscars, you know, this outrage about such and such didn't get nominated. Okay. Such and such didn't get nominated for this award. Of course it sucks because people that work hard should be rewarded, but at the same time, we know that they did a great job. The movie was a success. They got all this, you know, maybe they're, they're getting another job and then another job. They're in the running for another job. You know, we don't necessarily have to 
again, seek this white validation and unintentionally kind of erase ourselves with the way that we phrase things and talk about things. No one cares. And this, we care. We care. We care. And we're enough, you know, and it's very important to understand that. And, and I remember one time reading this quote. Um, what is the quote? It's like cluttered. What is it? Sloppy grammar leads to sloppy thoughts. Cluttered grammar leads to cluttered thoughts, something like that. I just feel like, and I feel like that way about everything. Like, the way that you think, the way that you speak, the phrasing that you use, the way that you write, that shit has an, an impact and an influence on your on your mind and, and on the way that you view things. So once you kind of start unlearning certain problematic behaviors, even in just the way that you talk and the way that you phrase things, you start to change. So, yeah. I just wanted to make a video about that because it was just a lot of really interesting um, conversation going on after the whole claw verdict. So hopefully they put this motherfucker under the jail, fucking rapist, thought that he could fucking rape black women and nobody would care. Jury told you no. Um, part of me wants to talk about how fucking Bill Cosby was splashed all over every media outlet. They had him and his fucking victims on the cover of every magazine. They fucking try to call Bill Cosby the most prolific serial raper of our time, of our generation. But this fucking Daniel Holtzclaw that fucking raped women, black women, they're black. So the mainstream media is warped. It's warped. We don't need them to tell our narrative. We don't need them to tell our stories. We All we need is ourselves and each other and our black spaces. So I just wanted to make this video talking about that. Um, hopefully everybody's rocking and rolling through December. Um, links in the description box on Daniel Holtzclaw and the case, um, just in case you're uninformed and you want to know more about it, just in case you just heard of it, you know. Um, so yeah, check the description box and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.